everyone, Stephanie Denman from the Denman Homestead here, and today I have a huge undertaking, a huge project that I'm working on, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, and it's how I make heating pads. So let me show you what this this one I just finished making. It's um, a three section and you can make them as long as you like or little mini squares you can really the sky's the limit on how you want to design these things but this is my go-to pattern um, I have one of these that I've made I handmade hand stitched before I even had a sewing machine years and years and years ago and it still is my favorite go-to one um, but I have made these in the past for everyone on the hill. Um, Papa had one made out of like marine. It was, I, I bought some special marine fabric for him. Um, and it might have gotten lost in the flood. I can't remember how long ago that was, but I decided that I was going to go ahead and make some of these for my online store whenever I get that up and going. And um, I found some really great fabric at Walmart. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. But essentially all it is is it's a piece of fabric sewn into three different sections. Um, and then it's filled with rice. Just long grain rice. I bought this big bag in bulk. Uh, it doesn't have to be long grain rice, I, I don't guess. But rice holds heat really well. And what you do is you take this thing, put it, put it on like a, a, a plate or something, and pop it in the microwave for about a minute or two max. Um, and it's going to heat up that rice, just plain uncooked rice. Um, and that rice holds the heat for a while. So um, ladies, sometimes we need heating pads, you know. Uh, this comes in clutch. Um, or for example, one year we lost power, we had a really bad freeze. So we had a fire going in the fireplace and I just set my um, rice pack on like the hearth area and just kind of let it warm up from the heat of the, the fire, absorb that heat through the rice grains and then threw it underneath our blankets and it gave us like a little um, heater without having any electricity. Um, you can do the same thing essentially with like long tube socks. Hopefully they're clean. You can just fill your sock up with some rice and then tie that tie a knot at the top, and you've got um, like a like a little heating pad, a makeshift heating heating sock. Um, but yeah, you just throw it in the microwave for a minute or two, pop it out, and it it just gives you a long lasting um, relief, pain relief, or shoulders like. It makes a really good, if your neck is sore, your shoulders are sore, it molds to you really well. Um, you can make them longer if you want to, but yeah, this, this works just like all over. Like, it's just nice to have um, cotton, all cotton material. The only thing is you can't get it wet. So, I mean, you could probably spot clean it, but if you get any moisture inside, that rice is going to absorb it. Um, and become like mushy and might go kind of moldy. So make sure that you keep this in a dry place um, and yeah, just use this whenever you need a heating pad. But let me show you what I'm doing, what I'm working on and how I make them. Once upon a time, I was hand sewing all of it. Now I do still hand sew some parts of this, but, but the bulk of it, I work a lot faster with my sewing machine. This is one that I've um, went ahead and gotten to like a middle stage. So I'll show you from basically start to finish the process in this way. Okay, so here I have a bunch of really fun fabrics. And they come in these little packs. Like, look, check out the Star Wars one. How neat is that? So I picked up some Star Wars ones. Um, I've got some really neat Christmas fabric. So I think that'll be kind of fun. Um, right now.
right now I'm working on some plaid designs, some plaid. Um, let's see, ooh, this sunflower was super pretty. Um, I might make this one for Jamie. She looks really good in sunflower stuff. Sunflower, but look at this. Can you see that? Yeah, bees. So I just found a bunch of cool fabrics that I like that I think others would enjoy too. And um, we're gonna cut them down to size. So let's start with this plaid one since I've already got this one open. But basically what we're gonna do is, I was able to get two, um, two heating pads out of this one sheet. Just open it up. And again, you can cut them. I'm just using the pre-done, pre-cut so I don't have to worry about measuring out how many yards or feet I want or anything like that. But um, lay it out on your table. This one's kind of crimped in the center here. You can get an iron if it would help you out. But you just basically measure them to how, how um, you could do it this way if you wanted to make them a little bit chunkier. You just want to make sure that you give yourself enough um, fabric to make a good size heating pad with it. So yeah, this is this is the about the size that I did these ones in. So you just basically make sure that they're even, spaced evenly on both sides, and then you can cut down the middle, and you've got your two separate sections. I have a tape measure out here just because I want to make sure they're pretty uniform where I'm making a cut. Yeah, so this is good. This is about 11 inches across, so we're going to cut it to five and a half mark, which is basically right in the seam right down the middle. So now that I've got this folded in on itself, I'm just going to go make a little cut here so I know where I'm starting. I can follow this center line all the way down of the pattern of the fabric that I can see through the fabric. That way, you try to stay, try to stay relatively even. It's not going to be an exact. This doesn't have to be super exact or perfect by any means. Which I mean, let's be real. We're talking about me here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn it inside out and we are going to sew along this edge and along this edge. Then we're gonna turn it right side out and then we're gonna sew two lines, but we're gonna stop so that we have a channel where we can feed the rice through. And let me explain. I don't know if you can see here, but I've done that with this one. I have sewn these two edges together and then I have sewn a, um, just a little bit, I stopped about three quarters of the way right here because I'm gonna pour rice in here and work it all the way down to this bottom chamber. And then once I've got enough rice in here, which is about a cup and a half, I'm gonna put a pin in it, put a um, little pin to close this off and then I'm gonna fill this channel, put a pin in it, fill this channel, and then I will turn this in on itself, and then I sew the top. I hand sew everything else. So once this is done, everything else is gonna be hand sewn. So I hand sew the top, and then I hand sew what's left of here, and what's left of here, and then I'm left with this. And you may be wondering, why do you have to hand sew all of that? Oh, why can't you just, you have a sewing machine? And I'll tell you. When you're working with stuff like this that's like really bulky and heavy, um, it pulls the weight down on your sewing machine. And unless you have a commercial grade sewing machine, which I do not, um, it, will, it will cause you a lot of frustration um, to get that to actually work. Um, so I have just resorted to hand sewing those little bits that are left. Plus, once you start filling this with rice, can't tell you how many needles I've broken 
running over rice. <laughs> it will snap your needle trying to get through rice. So it's just best to get as much as you can pre-sown and then you fill these channels with the rice and then you hand sew the rest and it's much less stressful. Or like I said, you can just make this cut and then hand sew all of it, which I've done that before in the past too. So let me show you how I, I'll sew this one. Full disclosure, I am not a seamstress and I am like, I know the very basics. I know how to get this thing going. I know how to re-thread it if I need to. I know how to put the bobbin in there, but don't, don't get me lying to you about how to do all the fancy stuff. I don't know how. And honestly, I just really, I don't, right at this point in my life, like I'm not super interested in learning the ins and outs of my sewing machine. Maybe later on down the line if I end up quilting or something, I don't know. But I just use it for the projects that I enjoy now. So this is what I know how to do, and I'm gonna show you how I know how to do it. All right, so. Remember, you're gonna, you're not gonna sew everything. You're gonna need to leave the top open. Um, so we're just gonna go all the way down the, the side of it right now and create like a tube. Okay. Bobbin is re-threaded. So let's try that again. Now that we've got one side, one long side sewn, I'm gonna sew the bottom and then we'll turn it back inside out. Now what I like to do with these little loose ends is I just kind of make a little bit of a, a knot just for double security on the, I mean it's on the inside, it's not going to, no one's going to see it. And then I tie off the extra just in case over time it gets, you know, a little bit of wear and tear and things start to get loosened up. Just make a little knot with my extra string, snip that off, same with my other side here. It's got this extra string and you know, where you ended. Even if you reverse the sewing machine and sew it back and then forward again, I just make sure I, you know, get it a little extra secure. Makes me feel better. <laughs> If anyone's wondering what brand this is, this is a Singer Simple. Don't let the name fool you. It is not simple. Uh, might be simple to some people. Maybe if, maybe if I practice a little bit more, but okay. I get by. I'm not trying to make like Halloween costumes. <laughs> uh, my mom used to make our Halloween costumes. My mom used to make quilts. She was good with her sewing machine. Okay, so I turned this one inside out, or right side out, from what it was before. And I'm just working my little fingers through to the corners and getting it all kind of this way, okay? So now we're well on our way to one of these. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go through and sew down a few little straggler 
pieces of thread. I'm just going to go down, and you can mark this if you'd like to, um, if you want to make it super precise and even. Sometimes with um, fabric that has lines or pleats in it, it's a little bit easier to remember where, you know, what goes where. So right here, we're going to be working with about 17 inches of fabric. So I'm looking at anywhere between like five and a half inches per square, five and three quarters per square. Um, I have this little white pencil. Um, it's a dressmaking pencil, but basically I can just go through and just make a few little marks if I want to on my fabric so I know um, where I need to start that, that sew line. Um, let's see, five and a half. Let's see. And that water soluble white pencil is just very, very light, and I'll sew right over it. You won't even see it. All right, so that means I have three equal, equal plate, equal squares. And um, I am going to go ahead now and start my line down um, vertically. So, but remember, because I've done this plenty of times and I've gotten carried away, to give yourself about an inch at least to get that rice down a channel, and then you have to because I've just sewn a straight across. I'm like, great, how am I supposed to get rice down there? So I had to rip it all out and start over. Um, so just remember to allow yourself some room to um, get that rice down that channel. Now, I like to sew my horizontal lines um, opposite of this right here. This line, right, this, this fabric that you join together and sewed is very thick and it can cause your sewing machine to jam. So I, I like to hand sew this end over here that has that, that thicker material um, together. So just keep that in mind. I start at the end that doesn't have the quadruple layer, it's just the double layer. you can see or not but I left myself just some space right here to work the rice down. The rice is kind of small but you'll have to just work it down and open it up like like you would like a little tube and just kind of let it all fall down in that channel. Now this other side where it doesn't have a channel I have this string here and I'm just going to tie it off. I'm going to tie it off and snip it. We've had some good rain these past two days which we really need it. All right, now I'm gonna go do the other side, the other square. So now, just like the other one, and this is what I like to do. I like to get all these little things done. I just do a whole, I knock all of these out. And that way, all I have to worry about after I've sewn everything with the sewing machine is filling and then hand sewing the rest. Um, so I'll just stack these, you know, I'll just get a big old pile going and stacking them all up. And um, if I decide to do different shapes or whatever, I'll just try to get all of the sewing machine stuff out of the way. And that way, all I have to do is go back, fill and hand sew and stitch, and we're left with the finished product. But I'll show you now the second step of filling these. So let's get, um, let's get this one here in my bag of rice. So I have my little piece of fabric here with the channel open in one end. And I'm going to take my little scooper. And I do about three of these. This is a half a cup, but it's not full to the top. But I just fill this up. scoops. Now it's all stuck at the top, right? So we're going to go kind of just, I just kind of grab it. And this is a little bit of a time consuming. 
but I just kind of work it. And you can kind of hear it falling. But once you kind of get a groove, a rhythm, and the bigger the hole here, the easier it is to get everything to slide through. I just like to um, give myself less stuff to hand stitch <laughs> if I have to. So um, I just leave that hole kind of small and then uh, just work this down. Again, you don't even have, you can just not even worry about these stitches at all and just fill the bottom, hand stitch it, go to the next one, hand stitch it if you want to. For me, I just found that this is what works for me. So we have got almost all this rice now out of this top pocket. And a lot of it has fallen to this second pocket. So you're gonna have to keep on working it. Just tap it, just, just tap it. And work that channel and it'll start working on its way all the way to the bottom. So that's what you do. You just, takes about a minute or two once you kind of get it down. This whole top, this whole top section is now no more rice. And um, yeah, then, so now we're just working our way from the middle section down to the bottom section. And I'm just, it's like a bean bag, just kind of working that rice through that channel. Now, um, another thing that I do with these, um, not this one in particular, but what I have done in the past is aromatherapy. Um, so I'll put in some dried, like lavender, eucalyptus, I'll add in some of that with um, the rice. And um, when you heat it up, those natural oils in those herbs um, release in the heat and it gives you a really nice scent um, while you're trying to relax or um, your muscles are achy or whatever it may be. So uh, consider that as well. I will add some of those specialty um, heating pads in, in the store. Um, this one's just a plain heating pad just so you can see. And if you're, if you're wondering about how much, how much to add, I just do like a teaspoon per section and it's plenty. Um, it will eventually lose its scent. It's not going to last forever, but it is nice to have, you know, for, for a while anyway. Um, okay, so this whole bottom section is now full. Everything else is empty. So in order for this rice to not continue to fall into this bottom channel, I'm going to put a pin in this. Just a straight pin, okay? Can you see that? Straight pin? Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to put a pin in this channel and it's gonna kinda lock it down and close it up tight. Okay, so this is, this is closed good. So now we're gonna do the same thing, three scoops in the top section and work it to the middle one. This is a good time to put on like a good Hallmark movie or if you're like me, a true crime podcast and just zone out. Make your crafts, listen to music, listen to an audio book, and do your thing. Make you, make you some presents, make you some gifts, or just pamper yourself, make you, make you, make you something. So, I'm just working this down to this channel. That one's done. Can you see? So we've got two separate now, and I'm gonna put a pin in this one, and then we'll fill the top. Now the top has a little bit more fabric than the middle two sections, and that is because I leave a little bit of space, about an inch or so, to fold it in on itself, and then I sew that seam like this. I'm sure there's a name for that. I don't know what it is called but I just think it looks neater that way um, and more uniform. So just keep that in mind. If you're measuring out in each individual squares that you allow yourself a little bit of extra fabric at the top to fold it in and sew it together. And that one is easy and simple because there's no channel to run that one through. I'm just gonna put about four or five pins on the top of this one to hold this tight while I Hold it tight and closed while I um, just sew these little sections and then I'll sew the top section last. And then you end up with this finished product. 
pretty cool, right? So uh, yeah, grab you some fabric, get you a needle and thread, grab some rice, and you make your own heat, like heating pads. Now, just be careful. Don't forget them in the microwave. Don't press 20 minutes on the microwave thinking it's two minutes. These will, this is cotton. It can catch fire. Please don't catch your house on fire. Um, two minutes tops with these, and it's gonna be plenty warm. Um, don't burn yourself. So if you're sensitive to heat, maybe just start off with a minute. See how warm it is. If you want to add it 30 seconds at a time, do that. But um, these, these are really nice in the winter time. Um, or if you're just not feeling good or, I don't know, maybe you get cold feet like me at nighttime. No matter what, my feet are cold. I don't know. Uh, put them in the bottom of your bed. Heat them up, put them in the bottom of your bed and go to sleep. And yeah, th I mean, it, there's just so much you can do with these things. So hope that you enjoyed this one today this craft i absolutely love doing these um it is a it is an undertaking but uh i every time i've given these out in the past with gifts and things um i've gotten really good feedback and uh people tend to love them so uh just keep an eye out for my store that's opening up pretty soon and um these will be in the store it'll be uh these will be for sale if you're if you're wanting to buy some. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. Uh -huh.